All right, Commissioner Anderson. Here. Commissioner Dunham. Not here. Are we gonna have a quorum? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Fagan. Here. <laughs> Commissioner Landsberg. Here. Commissioner Silloway. Here. Commissioner Pike. Here. Okay. And we are missing Rebecca. She was not able to join us tonight. She let me know in advance. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and let our guests in. Um, so first is Brickside Brewing, and then we're gonna look at um, a proposal by CC Coffee, Coffee Company, which is a revised proposal. You'll remember that they visited once before. So that's the yep. order of things. Great. Oh, I just am looking at your, your messages yeah. chat. Later, later. I just didn't want to forget to ask you. Okay, okay. All right. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Hi, uh, this is Laura Becker. I am the Arts Program Manager for the City of Beaverton. And welcome to the March 17th Public Art Committee meeting for the City of Beaverton. Uh, we are being recorded um, just in accordance with public meetings law. And that will be posted to the website after this meeting, just so you know. And um, I would love to just do a quick round of introductions if, if um, I may suggest that. So you know me and um, why don't we have the arts commissioners introduce themselves first and then we'll go to our guests. So I'm going to um, start with Commissioner Anderson. Hey everybody, welcome. I'm the current chair of the arts commission um, and uh, have served on the public arts uh, subcommittee. Uh, over the last couple of years, and I'm also on the Grants and Diversity uh, Subcommittee. So welcome. I'm excited to see your stuff. And then why don't we get, I'm just going with who's on my, who's on my screen here. How about Commissioner Silloway? Hi, I'm Peg Silloway. This is my second year on the Arts Commission and on the Public Art Committee too, as well, I think. And um, looking forward to seeing what you have. And then Commissioner Fagan. I am Shelley Fagan. I am the current uh, Public, Public Arts Commission Chair. I've been the chair for about three years now. Um, and I've served on the Art Commission for about eight years. I'm also a visual artist. <laughs> I paint and do pastels and all that. All right, how about we go to um, Commissioner Landsberg. Hi, I'm Shoshana Landsberg. I have been on the Arts Commission for one year as a as an alternate, I think, and then this is my second year as an actual commissioner. And uh, I'm a writer and jewelry maker, and I've been on the Public Art Committee um, the whole time, I think, that I've done that. So. Really excited to see what you got. Thanks. Thanks, Shoshana. How about um, Commissioner Pike? Good evening and thank you for joining us today. We're all excited to hear from you. My name is Sue Pike and I am an alternate on the Arts Commission serving on the public art for the first time. Thank you, Sue. And did I get every one of the commissioners? I think so. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to our guests. And if I, if I may ask Dan to um, go ahead and introduce yourself and then your team, that would be lovely. And I've um, made you a co-host so that you're able to share from your desktop. So uh, I'll have you take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Um, yeah, my name is Dan Brownhill. I'm representing the ownership group of Breakside Brewery. I've been with Breakside for about eight years now. Um, it's been kind of a fun adventure as we've opened a couple of locations here in the Portland area. Um, we've been working on the Beaverton project specifically for over a year now. So we're pretty excited to be kind of 
getting to a point where a couple months away from hopefully getting actually open and off the ground here. Um, Laura, do you mind also making Jeremy a host? He's the architect and he was gonna actually share his screen and kind of be in the driver's seat of this meeting. Yeah. Um, Allison is also on the call here. I'm not sure if Allison will need to share her screen as well, but they were gonna be a little bit more in the driver's seat as they're more of the creative side and I'm a little bit more on the business and operations. Sure, sure. I've made you all co-hosts. Okay, cool. Um, it seems that we're missing, or are we missing Tudor? Yeah, I we, think we, we have Tudor joining as well. Jeremy, you said something in the chat. Yeah, so it, it looks like uh, he's getting an error message that maybe we've kicked him out. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So uh, if, if we could figure out maybe there's, I don't know if there's another setting that we could maybe uh, get his name added back into the mix. That would be appreciated. Okay. He can't just log back into. He's trying it now and we'll okay. see if that works, but he was getting an error message that said uh, the host, what did he say? It said uh, the host removed you from the meeting. So oh. um, I don't know if he's, he's already crossed the line that we shouldn't have crossed, but. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> He does stuff like that. <laughs> it's probably my fault. I was trying to admit in a flurry. No, no problem. Thank you. Um, cool. Jeremy, do you want to introduce yourself next? You bet. Um, so I'm uh, Jeremy Cogdill. I'm with Open Concepts Architecture. Have been, uh, so as Dan mentioned, uh, one of the architects on the project. Um, so we've been collaborating uh, with a few folks um, on this call to kind of put some visuals together uh, for some of the ideas and concepts uh, that we'd, we'd like to, to implement if we could. Uh, and then Tudor would also be uh, uh, on the architectural team uh, and collaborating with the team that you see here um, to, to get those visuals um, together. So yeah, if he can, if we can get him added, uh, he's likely gonna be the one sharing his screen. I do have visuals pulled up as well as a backup. I am cool. trying to do that, so. No problem. Yeah, and I'll make sure this is all ready to go in case. Okay. In the meantime, let's jump over to you, Allison. Hi, I'm Allison. I'm a mural artist. I um, This would be my second mural with, with Breakside. I did one for their Lake Oswego location uh, last year. And um, I've done one mural for Beaverton. Um, I did the, I helped finish the Holistic Health Center mural uh, that Larry Kanga started. So that would, that's my, my other Beaverton mural. Cool, thanks. Thank you for doing that. I remember the mural and, and the circumstances. So yeah, thank you. <laughs> Boy, I'm so sorry. I just can't figure out how to get Tudor here. And um... no problem. We'll wing it. Uh, it's not a problem. We'll uh, message him. We'll see if he can get a call in number. Um, so at least he can join us. Um, yeah, maybe he would be able to get Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm going to resend the meeting invite to him and see if that works. I'm trying to do that as well. I just I just did it, so I think uh, let's see. message him on the side. Sorry about this. That's okay. It's my fault, I think. We'll blame it on Zoom. <laughs> I think we got it. Yay! <laughs> or at least by phone. Oh. <laughs> Hello. I, I, this is Tudor with Open Concept. It looks like I'm in on my phone. <laughs> Hi, Tudor. I'm so sorry that you got booted out of the meeting. All good. All good. I, I'm here uh, via phones, and I think um, uh, Jeremy will be kind of screen sharing, so we'll 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 make it work. <laughs> okay. Um, I was gonna say I just sent it to you again, the invitation. So if you wanted to try, you know, we can. Otherwise, let's just go for it. Sounds good. Let me uh, let me open it up here and try one more time. Otherwise, I think um, yeah, it's not working. But 
Um, yeah, I mean, I, I have the visuals pulled up on my end, so I know what we're presenting. Okay. Um, okay. Those all here, so just let us know when we're when we're uh, good to go, and we can kind of get into it. Okay. Now we just did a round of introductions, Tudor. If you just want to introduce yourself briefly, um, and then I think we're ready to kind of jump into the presentation. Sounds good. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm Tudor Bertia. I'm uh, with Open Concept Architecture, a project designer here. I've uh, been involved on the Breakside project here. Um, and uh, yeah, excited to kind of get into the mural design with you, with everybody, and to review everything. Um, and yeah, good to be here. Awesome. Thanks, Tudor. All right, so should we uh, just kind of jump into uh, some of the visuals and uh, some of the uh, some of the design notes? Yeah, that would be great. So who who was sharing their screen? Uh, I am pulling Jeremy. up some stuff now. I think that's going to be me. So <laughs> let me go ahead and get that. Shared. Here, uh, Jeremy, let me uh, send you a uh, here in case you don't have it. We're getting there. I've uh, let me know if this yep. is visible on everybody's monitors. Yep, it perfect. Is. Okay. So, and I've got a couple other PDFs that I was hoping to share. Tutor, what I could actually use is the, um, are the renderings for um, the rest of the site. Um, if you have those, if you can send those my direction. Yeah, um, so, the, um, I just sent you an updated PDF here. If you can pull that one up, it's got, uh, uh, some of the elevations in there as well. Perfect. All right. Just a second. Okay. So let me know if that image changed. You should be seeing a site plan now. Yep. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Do so you want me to All lead right. this one off, or do you want to do you want to kick us off here, or? Yeah, I'll kick us off. I've got, uh, I've got my notes yep. here. Um, we can start with the site plan. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, this project, um, uh, Breakside Brewery um, over uh, in downtown Beaverton, uh, historic block there, um, Angel Avenue, um, Farmington, right between Farmington and First Street. Um, so so an the site plan. Angel is page, page bottom, Farmington is along the left-hand side of the page. So I don't know if you can see my mouse, just to orient everybody. So uh, interesting fact, we got an existing building um, that's an old kind of mid-century uh, modern building from the mid-50s on the right hand of the screen there on the south part of the site. Uh, one story building used to be a furniture store, which is getting uh, uh, retrofitted basically uh, with an alteration into a restaurant space and a, and a bar space. So um, pretty cool change there and then uh, outdoor seating area. And then we also have the shipping container highlighted by the red box there right in the middle adjacent to the existing building. And then the north part of the site, we have a big food cart pod with six food carts, uh, an exterior kind of wood glue lamp canopy, um, and then um, a big, you know, kind of restroom and trash enclosure space underneath. But a lot of activity, you know, people hanging out in the, you know, the outdoor seating area there, interacting with the food carts, the bar container. The bar container itself is a, is a, bar service area so uh, two or so bartenders on the inside serving drinks from the bar container and people come up to the counter on the outside and, and grab their order um, and uh, very much supposed to be you know all sort of one integrated site element a lot of different pieces of the design here the exterior deck the existing building the shipping container food cart pod food cart canopy but it's all really meant to be kind of one cohesive experience um, so maybe, uh, Jeremy, if you go to the second page and maybe we get mm -hmm. into some of the visuals. We're on it. So, all right, so this is a view um, with the canopy open. Um, so you can see there, this is a view from Angel Avenue looking at the existing building. The existing building and the container will be painted kind of a, a dark gray color uh, to start and then the mirror will be applied on top of that. Um, so as far as the container itself, um, we're really trying to focus on some of the gritty nature of the shipping container. Um, which kind of hints at some of the aspects of the adjacent railroad line that kind of cuts through the center of Beaverton and a piece there. Um, and it is a shipping container. So it's, it's, you know, highlighting some of that nature of the actual structure itself. Um, in the areas that the pedestrians actually interact with, so that where you, people actually come up and, you know, we get their drinks and then the sliding door on the side where the kegs are loaded there along Angel, um, we go to more of a punched language in there where we replace the, the building with more of a softer wood materiality which is gonna be kind of a charred wood 
Shoshigiban um, aesthetic, which is a darker colored wood, charred aesthetic, uh, just providing a softer change, something for when, you know, it, it signaling a pedestrian interaction. And the mural itself will encompass all of the metal skin of the container outside of that uh, punched, well, outside of those punched wood areas. Um, and it, it's supposed to really kind of give a sense of color and vibrancy to both the shipping container and the existing building. So they're very much tied in one together, although they're two separate elements. Um, and it's really supposed to make everything kind of read as one cohesive site element. Um, the mural itself um, consists of, you know, some abstract splashes of color done in a kind of a watercolor-like aesthetic. Uh, so something that looks, you know, quite abstract to to the to the eye, um, but with a variety of different colors all tied into kind of one palette of, you know, a lot of different colors, but all basically from one palette tying in between both the existing building and the container. Um, and one thing that we're kind of hinting on here is this gets to the theme of kind of the food cart pot itself, which will consist of, you know, six independent food carts all serving you know, a variety of different food types uh, from different cultures, all kind of running their own, you know, all running their own thing uh, and each having its own kind of unique aesthetic. Um, thus, you know, there's kind of various different colors that shine throughout the food card pod. Um, so this mural with all the hints of different color kind of hinted at that, that aspect of it. Um, the adjacent building um, to the west side of the image, so on the east part of the site, um, Jeremy, if you could go back one page to the mm -hmm. site plan, I have a shot in there of the adjacent oh, building. Got it. It's up. Um, so that, that building right there adjacent to us, which will be kind of five feet away from the food cart pod, um, that building has a, has a mural that was done a, a little while ago, I believe, um, I believe by high school students. Um, so our proposed mural on the bar container will be kind of adjacent to it. Um, but, you know, it's really intended to tie into it and balance it out with, um, you know, with this adjacent mural at the adjacent building, um, which is done in kind of a similar palette of colors, you know, color splashes uh, with the theme of, you know, racial equity. Um, so our intent really is to kind of balance out with this adjacent mural and to be able to kind of show both pieces and let them stand alone as their unique pieces of art. So if we could kind of go back to the, the, the first image or the, the actual rendering itself. And maybe mm -hmm. Jeremy, we flip to the flip to the one where we show it with the uh, the actual closed. awning closed. Got it. Yeah. It's up on the screen. So um, you know, like I like I mentioned, really kind of focusing on more of abstract splashes of color, bring some vibrancy, tying it all in together. The two aspects that we really also want to focus on um, are that a little go beyond the abstract into some, something a little more defined is the wolf at the adjacent building. So along Angel Avenue, you see kind of a hint of a wolf, um, obviously just the eyes, that kind of upper part, uh, which serves as a symbol of, you know, some of the wolf packs that populate Oregon forests, native to the Cascade region and some of the indigenous populations. Um, so definitely some uh, getting at some of that symbolism in, in Oregon and uh, the Cascade region. And then the moon at the uh, bar container where you can see here with the awning closed. So when this is closed after hours and the hours of the evening, um, some of similar language there with uh, basically a moon kind of rising over the landscape, uh, you know, forested landscape in the same color palette. Um, but that really kind of hints back, first of all, at the wolf, obviously with the same motif, but also the aspect of nighttime. So when the container shuts down for the evening, you know, the moon sets over the landscape and the moon becomes visible, you know, kind of a big sign that the food cart pod has been put to rest for the evening. So um, all in all, you know, we're hoping that really this contributes a nice aesthetic and a nice visual to the project and to the downtown Beaverton core. A lot of the businesses operating, you know, within the food cart pod, independent food carts, all serving their variety of different uh, foods and, and from different cultures. Um, and really, you know, a lot of traffic that will go through here and also be, you know, walked around to all the other businesses within the adjacent couple blocks, uh, a very vibrant area. So. Um, as far as, you know, the themes of the mural, I think that that's really kind of the, the main summary of it there. Um, Jeremy, I'll let you kind of add anything you see fit. Um, but um, Allison, I think, you know, if you had anything to add more on the mural specifics, additional information, you know, in terms of like paints, colors, you know, et cetera, I'll let you kind of uh, get into that and if you have anything else to add. Yeah, Allison, I think actually it's probably most appropriate to send this your direction if you have any other comments you'd like to kind of offer the group. Um, yeah, I mean, other, I, I happen to weirdly have a, a good amount of experience with, with steel and other metals. So I'm, I have no issue there, but yeah, I think, uh, I think the color is just going to look great with all the, 
with all the gray and, and the new building. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm not really sure what other questions people have for me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think overall, we're just really excited about what we feel is a, a really vibrant, energetic piece that will really kind of activate the space beyond what it would be otherwise. And like Tudor was saying, take uh, some of the container art aesthetic that, you know, we've all seen, you know, over many years and just kind of evolve that a little bit more, refine it a little bit for this particular installation, um, but just really excited about it. Well, do, um, is it okay for me to open it up to questions from, from our commissioners? Please, that'd be great. Okay. Would anyone like to ask questions? I don't really have a question, but I want to say I love the design. I love the colors. I think it's really well thought out. I'm very excited that it's also going to bring attention to the other mural done by the Beaverton High School students. So beautiful. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Peg? Yeah, I, I like it too. I, my question is, what is the lighting on it at night? What does the, where are the lights? Do they really show the, this or is it just a deep, dark presence? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think the intent is to really provide more of an, um, an ambient light over the, the uh, with more even coverage through, you can kind of see the string lights that mm -hmm. uh, yeah. kind of cover the, the food cart pot itself. So um, right. I think the idea is that it's going to have a lot of energy <laughs> uh, with or without the lighting. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so, uh, you know, there will be a natural glow coming from, uh, as you can see, kind of the windows in this mid-century modern, you know, end of the building. I think that's going to naturally kind of bleed out onto, um, onto that face. Uh, there is also some street lighting um, that would provide some general coverage. Um, at this point, especially when it's in the closed position, we were not planning on uh, additional lighting for right. it. No, you um, wouldn't need it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but the, uh, the overhead lights would 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 you know would obviously uh, wash the front face here, which I think is probably the sure. most important part of it anyway. Yeah, I, do you have an, an image that shows that the face, the the, the section with the eyes, or is that uh, that's sure. a great way to see that? It's, it's yeah. I'm curious because you you mentioned it's a wolf image. Yes. And um, I'd like. If it's possible, I'd love to see what that looks like. Sure. Let me see yeah. if I can find so I think, that real quick. Jeremy, um, there, the last page has some of the elevations. Aha, uh -huh. there we go. Tudor, it's like ah, you expected kind of that question. <laughs> oh, that was really cool. I, I figured you had it, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was super cool. Very cool. Yeah. yeah. We just think it's really, a, I, I think it'll be a fun spot. I, hopefully there's a, a lot of folks that will take pictures in front of it, front, front of it. you know, it just kind of mm -hmm. captures the wolf. It, when you, when you zoom in like that, it really kind of gives a different, a different feeling. We're hoping it kind of humanizes the, the wolf a bit. This has I don't want to, yeah, I don't want to meet that in a dark alley at night. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. You bet. Okay. And can we I can ask? actually, if, you, if you'd like, we can go through the other elevations in more of a flat, um, you know, a true elevation form if that's of interest. Um, so I'll jump in here. Um, I, I'd love to see anything you have to show us. So my, I love what you have going on here. It's super cool. Um, and just a little side note, I actually looked at that building to actually buy that building. And oh, wow. turned it, yeah, I, I really wanted to buy it and turn it into a music store, a music store um, with a Very little. Cool. Menu. So I love the fact that cool. there's going to be a brewery going in there. I, I couldn't buy it, but I'm glad that you did or whoever wow. well, did. Hopefully you did. can come by and play some music sometime. Hey, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime. Um, but. I, I love what you have going on here. I like the bright colors. I love the fact that you incorporated the existing art. I've been, obviously, because I was so interested in that building, I've walked all around it and I've mm -hmm. seen, I'm really familiar with the space. And um, uh, it, it, it sounds like what you're doing is you're using the what used to be the furniture store, adding a container that you're painting, and that's going to be expand the, the space, right? And then all of the rest is going to be outside seating. Is that yeah. right? With the food carts up along uh, Farmington? 
Yeah, that's 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 Correct. basically accurate. Yeah, so we do have some outdoor seating here. You can see that the the, the brewery and, and restaurant would kind oh. of feed out into on this side. That's the a parking lot. That is currently a parking lot. Yes, okay. we're hoping it's it's yeah. Um, and then we wow. have the container here that we were just reviewing a second ago. Uh, additional outdoor seating around the food carts, and like Tudor was mentioning, we do have a covered canopy uh, with that that um, that has the bathrooms and some of the services kind of blocked into this back bar here that also is meant to look like a shipping container. So kind of building on that idea. Interesting. Okay, so interesting I, that you're taking the parking lot away. Um, okay. Yeah, it's really neat. I love the wolf. I love the I love everything about it. It's really, really, really cool. Thanks for painting my building. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I um, ask a question about your um, if you have a maintenance plan and you know how how you intend to mitigate if there is graffiti. Um, how you plan to handle that will you be uh, sealing it with a anti graffiti varnish or yeah just what's your plan allison do you want to take the first part of that yeah um i I've, I've had success using Ocon graffiti coat but if you have if the arts committee has a different um kind that you recommend we would go with that but um but yeah i would plan on on sealing the whole thing uh with that once the paint has had full time to dry and uh, yeah, that's been pretty, the other murals I've done haven't had a, a lot of graffiti, but the little bits that we've had to clean up, it's just soap and water and it's pretty straightforward. Oh, wonderful. That's, that's great. great. And then in just in terms of ongoing maintenance, I assume that it would be Breakside that is contracting, consulting at least with the artist and perhaps contracting with the artist to do any repairs or maintenance as needed. Yep, that's correct. Great. That's it. That's that. That's all I have for you. Anybody else? Yeah, I I had a question. Um, you said that you you uh, specifically um, used a different material for where you take in the uh, the kegs on the sides there. That door that's mm. on the side. Can you show that elevation from that from that direction? Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. I I. Personally, I, I wish that you would do something with that door because it kind of, it kind of, um, it kind of is like a big blank space. <laughs> and I, I was wondering why the choice was made to, to not uh, continue that. Is that something that you think is, um, wouldn't be, yeah, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. They, they, we agree with you. Uh, this yeah. was a zoning code issue. So the city is forcing us to change materials. Um, we can't keep it metal. And so because of that, we went with a, what, the, this rendering really doesn't do it justice. I don't know if anybody has seen, it, it, a lot of folks will call it shushugiban. It's basically a charred wood and it really has a beautiful texture. It really brings out the grain of the wood and gives it kind of, a, it's just a really interesting uh, kind of gritty look. Um, and so that is the idea is that we would use that, that charred wood um, on the doors and below the canopy, the awning opening, but the original intent was to treat this more as a shipping container uh, and be truer to that idea. Um, that was not allowed. And so okay. um, this is where we've landed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. I love yeah, it. I think it's, I, I really appreciate your sensitivity to the site and the other existing mural that's, that's close by there. It's, it seems really um, well thought out to me. So I, I really like it a lot. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I just want to join in and say the same thing. I like the fact that you are continuing that, the color scheme and, and the vibrance of it all. It'll be um, a very colorful place. So I, I think that this is a good point for us to um, conclude comments. Um, and I think, um, I'm so sorry because we got started a little bit late and we do have a, another presenting um, group here kind of waiting in the waiting room. Um, so I think what we're going to do is we're going to table the vote until the end of the meeting and then I'll just follow up with you, Dan, um, and team to let you know the outcome. But I think... Um, Unless there's any urgent commentary, I think we're, I think we're 
wrapped up and thank you so much this is beautiful i can't wait this is yep. one of my favorite buildings in downtown and Me it too. has become somewhat of a um unofficial mural district so thank you yeah. for adding to that identity thank you very much our pleasure yep. thanks yeah. everybody it was great thank you. thank you for your time Perfect. i appreciate it thank you everyone thank you all thank you thanks all. for making Perfect. everything cool <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much <laughs> thank you <laughs> have a good night all right bye all <laughs> all right goodbye bye bye, bye. All right, so I'm just gonna lunge right into the next presentation and I hope you don't mind, we'll have time to unpack at the end here. So um, sit tight and I will be bringing these folks in and not booting them out. <laughs> so let me just take my sweet time here and making sure. Hi, can you guys hear me? Yeah, yep. hi, Marianne, how are you? I'm good, how are you guys? Doing good. Hey, nice to see you both. Hi. Yes, we have Bryce joining us too. Hi, hi Bryce. Bryce. We've not had an opportunity to meet, so we'll do a quick round of uh, introductions really quickly before we turn it over to you. Um, and I will start, my name is Laura Becker and I'm the Arts Program Manager for the City of Beaverton. Um, and the liaison to the Beaverton Arts Commission. The public art committee that you're meeting with tonight is a subcommittee of the Arts Commission. Um, so I will allow them to introduce themselves. Um, and why don't we start, um, we're gonna reverse order this time. So let's start with Commissioner Silloway. Hi, I'm Peg Silloway. I have been on the Beaverton Arts Commission since my second year and, and joined the, also the public art subcommittee. I am a fiber artist. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Pike. I'm Sue Pike and I am an alternate on the Arts Commission this year and I've been serving previously to that on the Arts Commission. Thank you, Sue. All right, Commissioner Fagan. I am Shelley Fagan and I am the current Public Arts uh, Chair. I've been the chair for about three years. I've served on the Art Commission for about eight and I'm a visual artist. Thank you, Shelley. Um, Commissioner Landsberg. Hi, Shishan Landsberg. I've been on the um, the Beaverton Arts Commission for three years now, I believe, and uh, on the Public Art Committee the entire time. And I am an, a writer and a jewelry maker. Hello, my name is Lynn Francis Anderson. I'm the current um, chair of the Beaverton Arts Commission. I have been on the commission. This is the beginning of my third year. And um, I'm a musician, a singer, songwriter, guitar player, trumpet player. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Len. Um, all right, Marianne, if you would introduce, I think you've been been uh, to this group one time before, but if you would introduce yourself again and then um, introduce Bryce. Yeah, definitely. Well, it's good to see you guys again. I know it's been probably four months since our last conversation. Um, but yeah, I'm with CC Motor Coffee. I'm a project manager, so helping with the build out of our new Beaverton location, but born and raised in Beaverton, Oregon. So super excited about the location, um, especially that site at the Beaverton Bakery spot. And then um, I also work with the One Motorcycle Show, kind of a big event that we do at CC, which is essentially an art show with about custom motorcycles and all the motorcycle inspired art that we feature. So that's my role with CC. Thanks, Marion. Um, Marion, I can, I can intro myself if, you, if you'd like. I would love that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, first off, thank you guys for having me on this call. Um, sounds like I'm on, on the call with a bunch of uh, awesome creatives. Um, it, it makes me like want to get in and be like, what, what do you guys make? I want to see. <laughs> Um, so maybe we can, we'll get to that later, but, um, I'm Bryce Wong, um, artist and designer, um, currently located right out here in PDX. Um, I mean, I'm in Washington County, but I have a Portland address, so I'm right on the line. Um, currently working at Nike as a footwear designer for the skateboarding division. Um, but on the other side of that, I do a lot of illustrations, visual art, and, um, just generally a lot, trying to get after a lot of creative projects. Um, Super honored to ask uh, to be asked to do something like this for CC. I've 
done a lot of projects and murals with CC already. So um, I'm also a fellow motorcycle enthusiast. So um, this project seems perfect. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm excited to uh, present our design and uh, kind of talk through where our minds are at. Great. Uh, cool. Thank you so much, Bryce. It's so nice to meet you. Yeah, you guys as well. And I've made you both co-hosts. So if you um, want to drive, we'll just go ahead and have you jump in. Cool, Bryce, I have it pulled up. If you want me just to pull the visual up, I, I don't know if you have anything else you'd want to show. No, I think the, uh, just like that, that mock-up. Cool, I'll good. share it right now. Okay, cool. So you guys should all be able to see that, correct? We can, cool. Yep. Okay, great. Um, so yeah, this is the back side of our building. Um, it's in the little alleyway that's there uh, around the corner from the last mural that we talked about. And so currently it's a completely wide space, but Bryce mocked it up here on the back wall. And so, um, yeah, Bryce, if you want to take it and talk a little bit about the, the concept and, and kind of where you took it. Totally. Um, yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, so this is just a little, a little Photoshop mock-up. Um, so essentially, when I was asked to do this, uh, I definitely wanted to do something that was bright, fun, and, and, and definitely conducive to the kind of the goals of the community and make sure that was, I was representing CC properly in Beaverton. Um, so a little bit more on my background is before I was more of a on the design end, um, I have a background in tattooing. So a lot of the imagery that I use in my visual arts comes from a lot of the icons that I used to tattoo. Um, this is one of my favorite kind of pieces, uh, themes and icons that I that I wanted to make sure I could kind of bring some life to. Um, it's called the Pharaoh's Horses. So traditionally, this the, the piece, it kind of represents like things coming together, hence the three horses. Um, and each kind of represents something different. And traditionally, it's a wealth, status and power. To me, I felt like I wanted to kind of give them their own life and make them their own thing. Um, and after kind of like just thinking through the community aspects, making sure that I was looking at Beaverton's goals in general, um, the things that I wanted to represent through this was showing the three things coming together. Um, to me, that's, that's all about community. Um, so building community, enhancing the livability and creating a vibrant downtown. So those are the, those are the goals that I was reading up on. I felt, What's better than having a mural that represents things coming together, um, adding to this new this new space that again I think is going to be an awesome meeting place for creatives, for uh, motorcycle enthusiasts, and uh, coffee lovers, as well as adding in some color. Usually I work in black and white, um, but I definitely wanted to challenge myself with this one and kind of actually add some pops of color so that when people are driving by, walking by, drinking their coffee. Um, it's just something that is a, is, a, is a nice photo moment, a nice piece to take in and feel like, oh, there's a lot of vibrancy, a lot of life. Um, and, and to me, it, the, the three horses really represent the community coming together. So um, yeah, that's, that's the basic gist of it. Happy to answer any questions about it, um, dig mm -hmm. in deeper. Um, but yeah, I had a lot of fun kind of pulling this idea together and felt like it was something that was meaningful to me and also something that I felt like could be meaningful for the community. Bryce. Do any of the commissioners here? Oh, I see Peg raising her hand. Peg. Yeah, I'm I'm because I don't know exactly where this is. I can't. Could you tell me what the streets are and, and what the orientation is? Because to me, it looks like it's I don't know what's where am I standing that I'm looking at this? Yes, I, I apologize. I don't know the name of that side street. So that, that's the very back side of our building. So it's the back wall of our space and the front of our building is on Broadway. So I want to say it's, okay. is it East Main right there along the side um, that goes alongside the uh, Oh, we might be uh -oh. losing it. Not sure. There's a bank right down. Uh-oh. Marion, you're breaking up. Yeah, we're losing it. Back to um, so, 
So we lost your audio, Marianne. You might oh, want to. No. <laughs> we don't have you at all. <laughs> it sounds Maybe. quite hilarious, but yeah. I don't think that's what you're meaning it's to probably say. Probably not hilarious for her. No, She's probably I don't think that's the plan. <laughs> so if I, I think I can try to help um, answer where this is at. So um, Peg, do you know where the um, former Beaverton Bakery is? Sure. Okay, so it's it's in that same block on the um, east side, and it's on the um, the north side of the property. So um, it's kind of it's kind of in a in a really cool spot. It's like tucked away a little bit, but it's still visible from right away. So okay, um, yeah, I hope that that, that, that helps. That that does. Yeah, now now I can place it approximately where it would be, and I can go by and see it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Fine. Thank you. Uh huh. Anybody else have questions? And I can't speak for Marion necessarily, but maybe Bruce uh, or Bryce, sorry, can can um, help fill in the gaps a little bit. Yeah, I'll do my best. Okay. <laughs> I, I I do have one question, um, Bryce. What inspired the colors you chose? So those those colors are uh, kind of the combination of what is like a, a like three D when you put on like three D glasses. It's that blue and red, and again, it's like. So, so again, my intent was to kind of show things coming together to create something whole. So when, when I think of color separation, I think color mm -hmm. theory, how are we mixing things together to create something new? And mm -hmm. I think to me, that's where I was taking, hey, if you take these two color channels and put them together, it combines to create something and leads the eye all the way to like the main focal piece and, nice. and vice versa. Kind of like, you, you see that as you're walking around the corner, the first thing, and it will kind of like lead you down that kind of alleyway pathway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just just a little color through you guys. Visual yeah. artists here, all the artists here, I think. It it's awesome. Me, it I love it. Me, it reminds me Does that so mean much you're going to throw some purple in there too? <laughs> so when they converge? In that, in that, like where, it, where it's black, I was going to play around with different colors because like I said, I usually do black. Um, just black and white, but it could be fun to do like a, a darker purple because, of course, that's what happens when you combine blue and red. Um, so yeah, that, that would be something really fun to kind of play with and find the what the tones look like in the light. Um, and that's something that I want to mess with once we can get like I can get to the space, the sun's out and it looks nice, and see how how the different color chips might pay, play out. Yeah, cool. I like the I like the kind of psychedelic nature of how you have those colors kind of almost like blurred lines, you know, through that. So yeah, it's, it's super cool. It reminds me of uh, 3D glasses, the colors. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Anybody else have questions? I um, just, I looked it up on Google Maps. So this is on um, basically like the, the corner of Southwest East and Broadway. If you want to pull it up on Google View. I have a question. Will the entrance to this coffee shop then be on Broadway? I think yes. I, can you guys hear me now? Yes. Okay, yep. cool. I'm back. Okay, good. Um, yes, our entrance will be on Broadway on the opposite side of the building. So this is truly on the back side. There won't be any guest entrance from here. Um, we may or may not be able to use that alleyway for seating. It kind of depends on working with Miracle Sign or a landlord, but um, for now, it's really just a visual piece on the back of our building. Thank you. And, and Marianne, can you, um, this, this space is accessible to the rest of the tenants in that building, correct? Correct. Gotcha. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments? Yeah. Um, so Bryce, um, it's really fun. I, thank you for the background on why you picked the horses. I, um, that was really helpful to me, but I want to tell you like the first thing that popped into my head when I saw the horses was horsepower which to me related to CCs. So that was really like, I made that connection in my brain like really quickly. So that really like subtly really made a lot of sense to me. So I really appreciate that. I, I, I like the design as well for other, you know, for the other reasons that everyone else has mentioned, but that really subliminally caught me. So thank you for that. I love yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's an amazing little, little nugget right there. Call that like a, like a happy accident of the <laughs> 
Um, I'm gonna start using that when I'm when I'm talking about it at CC. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I know motorcycle engines aren't horsepower; they're CC or anyway. But it just I was like that. It, it immediately that's what I thought when I saw it. So totally. Anyway, thank no, you. <laughs> yeah. I also I also made that same uh, yeah connection. So. All right. That's good. Yeah. Peg, did you have your hand up? I just had the same question as you had on another case of, of maintenance, because I can just imagine people wanting to hop on board those horses and ride and painting themselves and who knows what else riding horses. So um, how do you handle the maintenance of something like that or protecting it? Um, I think so. I was uh, working out with Marion. I think we're going to we're going to work towards making sure that the paint is super durable therefore if anything ever were to happen to it i would it would be able to like we'd be able to clean it up also being able to use um i think there's specific terms for it it's like um it's basically a graffiti proof kind of coating um to make sure that if if anything does happen to it it's a little bit easier to maintain i also live about five minutes down the street so i'm always happy to come down and do some touch-ups um, I mean, I figure I'll be there, uh, riding my bike over and grabbing some coffee anyway. So I'm going to make sure it's all good. But, um, yeah, I think we're definitely making sure that it is something that is maintained well and is taken care yeah. of. I think the style of the paint actually really contributes to the ease of maintenance too, because it's just color block. So, um, there's not like gradation or shading, so it will, it will be easier to maintain if you have to paint over. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I would say if you're going to do, I, I would recommend an anti graffiti coat. Um, yeah. And if you, if it is um, ex, like a prohibitive uh, expense, you might just consider doing it at the lower register of the wall um, where it's within reach of folks. Totally. That's a great idea. All right. Well, do we have any lingering thoughts or questions? Or just a high five, great job, <laughs> we love it. <laughs> it's, awesome job. It's awesome, it's great, high five. Um, and maybe we can get the, the, the name of the uh, anti-graffiti material that the uh, other person had right mentioned. There, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, there was a previous one uh, mentioned uh, anti-graffiti coating that just, it washes it off with soap and water. It sounds really great. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I can send some recommendations your way. Awesome. awesome. That's perfect. Cool. Right on. Cool. Thanks, you guys. It's I love this one. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much. Maybe there should yeah. be a coffee named after the three horses out there. You oh, think? don't worry. We have Bryce working on a coffee project. We have Bryce working on a motorcycle a gas tank. Like Bryce is in the mix. <laughs> we can come up with a coffee drink. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Bryce, um, one quick thing too, I would love to send tickets for the one motorcycle show to all of you guys. And so I'll send information to Laura about it, but we'd love to invite you guys out to come check out the show and see the art and um, learn a little cool. bit more about CC too. Thanks. Thank you. It's nice yeah, to you. I think that they would love that. I will say that I already bought my tickets. Oh, me. Um, so <laughs> well, I'll get you some drinks there, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to ask Bryce if he's actually entering a bike. I'm not entering a bike this year. I am working with Tor to do some some art on some bikes. Um, I was super, super lucky a few years ago to do to design a, a helmet um, for one of the for they do like the 21 helmets. Yeah. Um, event, yeah. which I think is something that is absolutely worth seeing. It's just so fun because CC provides the helmets to all uh, tons of different artists. Um, and it's just so amazing to see where people's minds go to. Um, and to have them all displayed all amongst the bikes is, is a really cool experience. It was cool. Bryce filled in the full face guard of his helmet and made it a smiley face guy <laughs> with a very similar style to what you see. So I'll send some pictures, more info, um, and some details on tickets so you guys can come check it out too. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you yeah. so much, Marion and Bryce. I know that you have other things that um, you're committed to tonight. So we are, I think we'll just go ahead and let you off the hook, but we'll, um, we'll take a vote after, um, and uh, wrap the meeting and then I'll, I'll follow up with you. And you, um, like I said, Marion, the recording will be available online if you guys wanna go back and 
um, go over any of the comments, should there be lingering comments. So um, yeah, thank you Great. so much for, for you, sticking Mary. around late. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> yeah, thank you all for uh, taking the time and uh, hopefully we'll be having enjoying coffee over the new mural soon. <laughs> Yeah, at the, at the dedication. Thank you. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. That was awesome. I knew I that. I, I was like, I saw the 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 rendering, and I'm like, Shelly's yeah. gonna love this. <laughs> 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 but I didn't know how to let the cat out of the bag. It was probably the wrong animal to use, but a horse out of the bag. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a big difference from what he did before. Yeah, well, I think I that really I, like it. Yeah, yeah, I do too. It was worth the wait. Absolutely. I, I feel like it's been every month. I'm like, are you ready? And then it's sort of a start, stop, start, stop. And I mm -hmm. just, I, I like that it, it, we waited for the right thing. So. Um, well, shall we just go back for um, to our, our first per, uh, presenters and um, if, if there's any um, remaining comments, um, sounds like everyone was pretty supportive. So, I mean, I think that what my, um, I just want to remind everyone that these are on private property and they're paid for privately. So, um, you know, we would definitely want to support, but um, we have to have like a little bit of a a light touch on these, um, just in terms of the content, like just making sure that it's appropriate for the public realm. Um, and they've thought through um, logistics and materials, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it seems that everyone was in support of the break, the Breakside Brewing mural. So if, if that's true, can I please just have you raise your hand? Excelente. Unanimous vote and una unanimous yes vote. <laughs> I like that one a lot. I yeah. love that love one. one. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, me too. And you better take them up on it, Lynn, to go play music there. You should. Because <laughs> we will all come. And we all come. I'll be, be there. there. I'll do it. Fine. When are they supposed to open? I actually don't know. Um, I know that they're building out the space right now. I mean, they're in cool. the initial stages of building it out. Yeah. It's so, it's so awesome what they're doing there. I, it's a very exciting. I think I need to walk around. I have I didn't know that was even going on. Yeah, yeah. that that building, you, Sue, you might remember the the house that was uh, on the other side of the parking lot that how, that had the dress shop yeah. in it. Yeah, mm -hmm. so they tore that house down yeah. and opened that whole thing up and then the furniture store is still left. Um, hmm. yeah. And they're going to um, redo that. I was, glad really the, cool. I was glad the furniture, not the furniture, the dress shop moved around the corner, though. That was yeah. good. Yeah, yeah. That's a fun shop. Really close by. I do. I did hear your, uh, I, I echo your concern about the loss of parking. I think everyone that spends time mm -hmm. in the city would. Um, and I think that's just something that we're going to have to be conscientious about development wise moving forward. And maybe. Well, it that was that was going to be my question um f off on the city side was is that something that's a consideration when when new businesses are coming in because there's not only the parking lot that was in front of the furniture store but the entire parking lot that was the whole rest of that thing was a parking lot except for where the house was so with that gone that's a lot of parking that's probably what mm -hmm. 20 parking spaces or something that's not mm -hmm. there anymore. Yeah. Quite and a, all quite of them long. were, you know, on private property. And I think it just based on the zoning, I think that they have the right to not have parking. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I'm sure that they worked with site development and permitting and all that. I'm, you know, I'm certain that uh, they did. Sure. sure. I, I just have dreams of having a parking structure over on the old town side of Beaverton um, just with the farmer's market and like just so much activity going on over there. I feel like it's kind of the missing, the missing link. So mm -hmm. go, go get in your, um, city councilor's <laughs> ears about it and let them know. <laughs> you won't know be some, the only one screaming. Don't, for know somebody, don't we know somebody who knows a bunch of city councilors? <laughs> <laughs> So 
So, um, yes. Speaking of Shelly, how is, how is Mark? How are you guys doing? You've been traveling a bit. Um, yes, we went to San Diego and saw our son for the first time since he moved during the pandemic. And wow. yeah. Going to Chicago next month. <laughs> so great. I it's love on. It. Yeah. Good for you. I'm so happy that you are able to do that. Yeah, me too. Um, okay, so for the CC um, Coffee Company, um, do we have... Lynn's already raising her hand. Yes, that's a yes, not a question. Yes, that's okay. a yes. Affirmative. All right. I'm voting before the voters okay. ask for. Okay. <laughs> Unanimous. Okay. All right, excellent. Um, I, I had seen both of them before, so I... I I, I didn't see any red flags. I was like, okay, I think that they, I think they dialed it in. I'm pretty sure we're going to have support. So um, uh, the last thing that I have on the agenda is, um, this is a kind of change of gears, but we have um, uh, a date set for the public art dedication at the Beaverton Public Safety Center, mm -hmm. um, June 2nd at 7 p.m. And um, that's also a dedication for the plaza. So it's a joint, a joint event. Um, so I, I just wanted to, number one, get it on your calendars. We're not looking for, I mean, I have mixed feelings about this, but we're not looking for a, like a gigantic audience because it's a pretty small space in a, on a very busy intersection. So just, with pedestrian safety in mind, like we just want to manage the crowd. Um, and um, the, the thoughts that I had, so we'll want to have Shelly, if you're willing, um, give remarks um, at the dedication, if you feel okay. comfortable doing that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, and then as long as you're here, I should say like, <laughs> if you're here. Um, and then what I had thought we would do since blessing, um, I mean, it's, uh, it's unlikely that we're going to be able to fly her from Hawaii in for this dedication. And I think, um, she's, she's sort of put this project to bed. Um, but what I was going to ask her if she would do a, a short video, like, um, similar to the videos that we had the artists for the Reaser make, um, for those of you who, who watched those videos at the, um, the art guide training. I wanted to have her do like maybe a little bit more of an extended version of that, which would sort of introduce the project and talk about her process and the outreach she did and go like kind of um, cover the community events that she did and uh, just be like a little mini documentary about the work. And I, um, I wanted to have it, um, well, we're still kind of figuring this out, but what I thought would be cool is that um, they have that community room in the police or the public safety center and so what I thought, since it's, it's going to be, you know, seven, but it's, you know, June, so it's going to be light still. So I thought that we could do a screening in the community room of the public safety center and people could go, you know, go in there and watch it and it would just be looped. Um, so, um, and then I think we're going to do a photo, some kind of photo activity, whether that's a photo booth or somebody who's roving and taking photos. What we really want is photos of people actually engaging physically with those artworks. Um, so, and then they would be able to go and they'd be either able to uh, get them printed right there on site or go to a, uh, um, a website where they can download the photos after. But I thought that that would be kind of fun. Does that all sound like a good approach? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 We kind of, um, in terms of our budget for art dedications, we, um, you know, we had the reaser, which was significant. And so I just don't want to get too extravagant with our budget. Um, so, and I think that's really manageable. It's a manageable um, event. And I think we'll still be really lovely. So I just wanted to make sure that I had, I wanted to talk to you about my ideas before I got too attached and just make sure that I had support from you. Um, yeah. So everybody seem, seems to be thumbs up about that. So, okay, good. Yeah. And I really do hope that you all, um, you all make it. Um, just so you know, um, in case you're, you have like little uh, question mark um, in your head about this, uh, because of the gift policy for commissioners, 
it's just um, the value of the ticket for CC. If you if you want to go to one moto, it just needs to be under fifty dollars for you to accept it, which it is. Oh, okay. So I okay. just wanted to make sure that you all know that. Oh, thanks for telling us because yeah, I didn't you. know that. Yeah. Um, do you guys want me to show you what this Shoshugabon looks like? Yeah, I love. Okay, so uh, Shosugi Bon is very near and dear to me. In fact, I just did show, uh, Shosugi Bon for, um, I don't know if you all know Linda Twitchell, who was yeah. working on the, um, the fundraising. Yeah. So she did, a, she installed a, a sculpture piece in her front yard and hired, she hired Marco, my partner, to um, install it and build the support for it. And, and we did show Sugi Bon on it. And it was, it's just That's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Oh. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. 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 Well, there's well, one example of it, you know, kind of going two directions. Then there's one other example I found that is a, a you know, retail space. Obviously it's going horizontal mm -hmm. and they were talking, they have it set up to go vertical. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's going to be really cool. Again, it, actually a really nice contrast against the metal. Mm -hmm. It'll be beautiful. Like you can see yes, the yes. contrast against the, the brick here, which is, you know, nice looking. And you can see sort of this metal kind of look over here, how something like that might it actually draw you, draw your eye across. Um, mm -hmm. And there are so. different, like, different stages of Shosugi Bon. So you can, like, in this one, those panels that are really, um, like, dark brown and black, those have been um, burned uh, yeah. numerous times. And uh -huh. so basically you burn, you burn it, and then you um, uh, scrape it down with a wire brush, and then you burn it again, scrape it down, burn it again. Some people use beeswax to seal it. But what it carbonizes the surface, so it makes it really um, weatherproof. Right. Yeah. You don't have the rot. What is right. the material itself? Is it, it wood? Is it, it's wood. What kind of wood? Typically, it's done on cedar. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's it pretty traditional. Yeah. Traditional. We can see like this one here. You can see how kind of yeah. crunchy, crunchy burnt it is compared to like the one above it that's definitely less burnt. Yeah, this is there's great, tons of examples. This is a great uh, sample of it because you can really see the different yeah. stages of burning. Yeah. It's yeah. So and, cool. and that contrast again, like with metal and wood like that, it's really cool looking. Anyway. Well, that outdoor space they have there, we're gonna have to go um, go over there and have an outdoor meeting. I'm saying. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm ready, especially if there's beer involved. <laughs> Duly noted. Um, okay, well, I think um, I think we're I think we're wrapped up. Um, I don't I don't um, I anticipate that we may need to schedule a meeting next month. I'm waiting to see if we get the proposal, the refined proposal from Studio KCA. If we okay. do, we would be reviewing that next month. I hope. Okay. <laughs> um, but, uh, if I can also give you a month off, we don't need to meet every month unless there is something to discuss or vote on. Uh, yeah. so we'll just kind of play it by ear and I will keep you all updated about where things are at with the studio KCA proposal. So, okay. Awesome. That's Great. Good. Thanks. Nice to see everybody. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all. And I love the, the wonky start of things. I got, just to give you the background, I got locked out of my computer oh. and I couldn't get back in. Oh no. And oh, no. I, um, so I was running around trying to like figure out like, and I, every single, I mean, it's just a connected to a profile. So no matter what computer I went to in the building, it wouldn't let me log in. So then I had to have, I had to log in with Courtney's profile and then get, it was just one of those things where, and, and our IT um, or ISD here at the city, um, their IT department. They don't stay here past five. So <laughs> you're kind of you're kind of on your own. Yeah. So I apologize for that. It all worked hey. out. It did. Yeah. All good. Good. Back on track. Yep. All good. <laughs> okay everyone. Thanks, everybody. Well, happy St. Patrick's Day. I don't know what yeah. we have plans, but um I'm going home to eat some corned beef that's been sitting in the crock pot since this Ooh. morning. Yum. Yeah. I had it before I got, got on, so it's delicious. Good. I know. I can't <laughs> wait. I'm hungry.
I didn't cook mine today. I'm going to cook mine on the weekend. Oh, good for Married you. Married to an Irishman. What can I say? Oh, oh. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> okay, well, um, I will see you all and talk to you soon. Good to Bye. see you. Bye. Good night. Bye. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.